Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Athanasia by Immortality Games. This game plays three to seven players, takes about 20 minutes per player, and is for ages 14 and up. And in the game Athanasia, you are playing as one of the seven civilizations attempting to gather the Immortality Key. And if you can do so and get back to the exit before anybody else, you'll win. The other way, of course, you can win is if you defeat all other remaining civilizations and you are the last one surviving. This is a tactical area control game based around attack Hacking, gathering items, stealing items, and gathering the key and bringing it to the exit. You're going to be playing on not only your main board of the game, which is in front of all players, but also you're going to have your own individual player boards that will allow you to move your characters in between worlds and teleport onto the map. You'll have six different characters to choose from with different abilities, as well as a health tracker, and your objective is basically, like I said, moving around and gathering what you need in order to win the game. Will you be successful at doing so? Find out in my review, and of course, how to play the game Athanasia. Setting up the game Athanasia is very simple. First, go ahead and have the main board placed in the middle of the table. Then each character, or player I should say, is going to gather a civilization. Choose which color you would like to be, gather six of the seven different characters of that civilization, and a health tracker board. Place each of the characters on the top and bottom rows of your health tracker board, and then place a red health tracker marker on the number of the character's HP, which is six. Gather each of those character tokens and a main gate board, and place those characters surrounding the inner circle or portal of the game board as well. After that, go ahead and place any additional markers, like movement markers, uh, aside, uh, as well as placing all the items except for the key into the bag here. Additionally, you're going to be taking this item deck of cards and shuffling it up and placing it next to all players to begin the game at the Nasia. All right, so talking about how to play the game. Well, go ahead and select one singular player to begin the game, which will go around in a clockwise order. On a player's turn, they are going to be able to utilize all six of their characters for movement. Each of the characters have a specific movement on their character card, which is going to be nine, and they can move their characters from within their inner city in, out onto the main game board. And uh, they can choose to kind of mix and match movement. They can move four and then stop and move five, or move five and then move four, or move all nine spaces. And you can do that for each and every single one of your characters but you're also going to get action points. You'll get three action points total on your turn, and you can use those for each of your characters. Uh, the different types of actions are as follows. One is you can steal an item from a player, which is similar to how you would attack a player. You can attack a player. You can activate an ability on your character card here, which will allow you to basically do something unique uh, for the game. And then you can also activate an obelisk space. Uh, when you've moved your character and you've gotten to an adjacent character, you can go ahead and try and steal or attempt to attack that player. When you've gotten to an obelisk space, you can activate that obelisk space by taking one of the tokens and turning it into your color and placing it on that space as well. And then for your character ability, there's going to be different things that say different things as well. Some of them are passive, some of them involve rolling a die, which will then allow you to um, give all of your linked aliens health or maybe do a damage or maybe steal an opponent's character for a turn or prevent damage and so on and so forth. So move all six characters, perform three actions uh, based on your action points for any of the characters that you have, and then you will pass the turn. And the next player will get a chance to go, and so on and so forth. Up until one of two things happens. Either A, all of the other opponent's civilizations have been eliminated and yours is the last one remaining, or B, you're able to gather the uh, two key ingredients to uh, place in the middle of the board, and then you'll activate this immortality key. When you activate this guy here, your then objective is to take it to the exit gate with your character, because each of your characters can hold up to two items, and one of those can be the key. And if you bring it from the middle of the board to the exit gate, you'll win the game, which is obviously like a secondary victory condition. And uh, that's basically the idea of the game. Now, the different actions, how they work is pretty simple. And if you activate an object, space with an action, you're going to gain a plus one to your movement, a plus one to your attack, and to your range, and that will stay for as long as that obelisk is activated. If you choose to attack another player, you need to be adjacent to them, and basically you're going to uh, check any modifiers that you may have for attacking, as well as any other linked characters, characters that are next to your character that is attacking, and you're going to roll a die. You'll roll that die, you'll add that number to your modifiers, and if it is higher than your opponent's defense, uh, and any modifiers they might have, like a card or an item or whatever, then you will do damage to them based on your character's damage. And all the characters roughly have 
two damage that they can give out. And each of the characters have six HP that they can have to begin the game. And so if your character ever goes to zero, then they are dead, and you will lose that character for the remainder of the game. Uh, the other thing is uh, stealing as well, which functions just the same as attacking does, but you'll be able to take an item from an opposing character and place it underneath yours. Uh, and that is fairly useful because you might need that key or maybe a specific item that's going to help you throughout the game. After the first round of play, at the beginning of every single player's turn, not only are they going to activate and move all of their characters and then perform three actions with three of the characters, but they'll also roll the die. They'll roll the die, check the number, search their bag of items, pull out one randomly, and place it on the space provided with that number. So on a five or a six, I place my item there, which is a coin or coins. I'll search through the item deck, and I will place that item out onto the game board. Well, this one here is called money, it's a passive item. Anybody that goes to that area and picks up that item is then going to receive the money card, and they'll utilize that card until it is either removed from the game or discarded or activated or whatever they say, and they're all very different as to how they function. But for the remainder of the game, each player's turn is going to begin with a roll of the die to determine where an item goes alongside the outside of the board. And that will include items like the Philosopher's Stone, which is going to be a key ingredient to being able to uh, uh, craft the Immortality Key. And the other item you're going to need is called Anti-Matter. So when you get these two guys here, you're going to then take them and bring them to the center of the board there, activate the key, and then move the key to the outside of the game board as a secondary win condition. Uh, and that's pretty much the idea of the game. Uh, there are a bunch of different characters, and they all function differently with different abilities. Like, for instance, this guy here is Baxgun Jarak. When adjacently attacked, you can roll a d20. If the roll is a greater than 14, block the attack and deal damage equal to this character's attack power. So that's pretty useful. He's going to kind of have a counter attack. Or maybe perhaps this guy here has a plus one attack power for all aliens within a three tile radius of this character. So it functions similarly to a linked uh, bonus, but in addition, it's anybody within a three range of tiles. Um, and so on and so forth. And like I said, there's seven characters, and all the characters have the same abilities, but you just get to choose among the seven which of the six you would like to keep for the game of Athanasia. It's pretty straightforward, right? This game is a very straightforward tactical combat game with a bit of area control and kind of a uh, fetch quest that's involved within it. You're not trying to find the, I don't know what they call it, like the MacGuffin. There's this magical key that they need to gather and bring it back to the exit gate in order to successfully complete your mission or of course, you go on the all-out offensive, like one of my friends Josh would do, and simply try and defeat all other players uh, within the time limit of the game, which is based on when the key pops out and everybody races to get it, which will still give anybody who's behind, as far as defeating other players, a chance to catch up in the game and succeed. Uh, this game has a couple of unique little things on the board here, which I didn't explain as well, which were kind of cool. I really enjoy the fact that it has a tower space, which gives your characters range if they are on or adjacent to that space. Uh, I talked about the obelisks, which give you bonus to your stats, provided you have activated these obelisks here. And then they're going to have also these warp gates that let you bounce between worlds, uh, moving around the board, thusly trying to secure specific locations. There's a middle of the board where you can place your items down. There's no cost to doing so, and will activate the key, which will trigger the ending of the game. And then there's the item spaces, where when you roll your die, you place your item out, and uh, it can go anywhere on the board randomly. It could be beneficial to you on your turn, or it could be completely across the side of the board, and you're not going to have a chance to get it because it's much too far away. Uh, this game also has some really great artwork. All the character artwork is excellent. The characters are explained very well on the cards. You know what they do, how much health they have, um, what their defense is, what their attack is, and what their movement is. And it's specified with really un unique and nice icons that work very well for the card. And they, of course, have their own names and the type of character they are, not only in color, but also in their specific colonies. So we have the alien races here. This is the intelligent uh, primate over here. And this one over here is a draconian. And then we have the humans here, and there's three other classes as well. And each of the characters has their own unique functions. They can be provi provided some type of benefit to you. Characters can be linked when attacking, so when you have characters that there's three adjacent to each other and you attack another player's uh, characters that are also linked, that will provide a benefit as well. So you're going to be getting combat and defense benefits when you have characters that are stacked, um, as well as any other items you might have or abilities that can provide counterattacks. And while attacking is very simple, rolling die, checking modifiers against opponent's defense plus modifiers, thusly then doing damage, there is quite a lot that can be put into what you can do, how you can protect yourself when playing the game. Uh, the game board here 
uh, works fairly well, but I imagine certain people don't like this style of tile artwork. For me, it doesn't bother me much at all. I like the game Ignite, but somebody like Tom Vassell might be a little bit less appreciative of the style of artwork as far as the tile boards go. Uh, the fact that the game board has different spaces is really nice. There's different options you can do. You can go to the obelisks, you can go ahead and teleport, you can go ahead and go to the specific range spaces, but I would like actually additional spaces as well. I want more things to be on the board. I want to be adding different little obstacles on the board to change the, the way the board is shaped and spaced around each time I play. So maybe even just little obstacle tiles would be nice. Maybe ones that are like like a, four, a two by two or a three by three or six by one. They kind of space out the game board and differentiate itself from uh, a, a gameplay that I played previously. That would give it a little bit more replayability value. Uh, the characters all have the un unique actions and special abilities, which are really cool as well, but they're not individually uh, that much different comparatively to the other ones. I would actually prefer each of the races to have unique special abilities as opposed to them having the similar ones. Uh, that you can just choose between and I think that'd be more interesting and provide a little bit more variety as to what the character races do um, and I also dig the style of the health manipulation you have each of the different cards that you put on top and on bottom you have your little health trackers it's a really really unique and nice way of creating HP for your units and uh, identifying when they pass on or when they do not pass on by just showing how much health they have. And there is play elimination in the game, but normally I would ding a game for player elimination. But in this case here, I won't ding it so much because it's very unlikely you'll be eliminated by the time the key pops out. So you're at least gonna have a chance to get that. And by the time somebody gets eliminated in this game, it's also fairly likely that um, they would have at least had a chance to win the game. And uh, I think that maybe in a larger player game, this might be an issue, but with the uh, four, three, four and five experience I had, player experience I had, it wasn't so, so much of an issue for us. But I could see how it might be, especially if you're trying to eliminate all other players and ignore that key. It's possible that some players might have to sit out, and that's always a negative when it comes to not being able to play a game. The way the dice work, roll works is fine. It makes it pretty straightforward. There's a lot of modifiers to change your luck. There's not a huge amount of luck in this game other than attacking and stealing, but otherwise the game is kind of up to you as to how you want to craft your modifiers, craft your chain links, utilize these range, you know, teleport from one space to another, etc. Etc. The items in the game are really cool. Some of them are better than others. Some of them let you steal a player's turn, kind of like a mind slaver in MTG. Um, and others are going to do stuff like every rival in a three tile radius is incapacitated for a turn. Also very good. Teleporting three characters, restoring HP to 10. Wow, that's really good. Um, or a life scroll, uh, heal a dead character to six HP and place them on any unoccupied tile in your base. Remove this item from the game also fairly cool as well. And so those are these different items that are pop around on the game board. They're fun, they're quirky. Some of them are like the banana are really, <laughs> really uh, something I've, I, I've seen before, but it's also different. And I, I do appreciate that as well. If you like a game that's tactical, uh, based around movement of your characters, assigning different combat chains and links, utilizing special, special abilities, uh, this game is well, something, something I would suggest you take a look at. Uh, what I will say, however, it is it is fairly long. It's 20 minutes a player, and if you're playing with seven players, you're looking probably at a three-hour game, most likely. Uh, another thing I would say to this game is I would like to see more stuff on the board. Like I said, it's very important that I want to see different changes in the game uh, involved on the different tiles and a place and then the last thing is I'm not really sure why this board here has uh, so many additional spaces it's almost not really used all that much in the game there's uh, two different spaces you can use on it but the rest of it's just kind of there taking up space maybe I'd prefer it if there was just a, a six by six with three going up I don't know exactly how they would do that but it was just kind of like extra space for not a huge excellent reason because you barely ever use that after you move on to the board here to try and collect the key. Overall though, a solid game with beautiful artwork, <laughs> and if you don't mind a game that's longer and more in depth, a lot more strategy and a lot more choices you'll need to make on a turn, which lends to analysis paralysis, then Athanasia is something I would strongly suggest you take a look at, which is currently on Kickstarter in the link down below in the description. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Athanasia. If you like this game, check out the link down below where you can go ahead and pick up the game. You can also go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe to this channel, unfilteredgamer.com. Blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more on the site. Don't forget to also donate, donate on Patreon for a buck if you'd like to join us as we do more live streams. We played this game live last night, and we played, this, played another game as well. We play games every Sunday, 6.30 p.m. PST. 
So join us on Facebook and we'll have Twitch up soon as well. Um, Moonshell and Mermaid Game is a game my wife made. We uh, have now gotten our copies and most of the games have been shipped out to people. And if you like puzzle games, short, simple, sweet family games and something I would strongly suggest you take a look at as well. Um, hopefully this is a prototype by the way because I didn't mention prototype, so uh, there's probably going to be changes in the game, and uh, you know, when it comes to technical games, I always like to see miniatures, so I'm excited to see what they do with the campaign as far as additional upgrades and enhancements to it. So I'll basically be taking a look at this one the moment it pops up to see what they've decided to go with, whether it be miniatures, whether it be a higher quality bases, and, and, and et cetera, et cetera, because there's definitely some little improvements I would like to see involving this. Thank you guys so much for watching, and as always, I look forward to to defeating your specific colony in Athanasia next time.